All right, y'all. Lemonade, the visual album. This is her second visual album. Um, of course, she made it in a, a, a grander scale because last time she just dropped it out of nowhere. Nobody saw it coming. This time, she let us know it was coming, but we just didn't know what it was. And she premiered it on HBO. Big hustle move for her. Kudos to her. She's always like trying to go bigger every time she does stuff. And I can appreciate things like that. Now, she has these different chapters in this visual album. And we're going to go through each chapter. Now, we start with intuition. She's talking about how, you know, she want to know when you drift off in the silence, where are you going? When you coming back here at 3 in the morning, you know, telling these lies and stuff, you know, why are you doing this to me? You know, you remind me of my father. You know, you kind of a magician. You know what I'm saying? And I mean, we not going to go there. We, we know what men can be. Especially when they know they got us and we ain't going nowhere. Child, look. We all know. We know. Anywho. Now, with intuition, it ends with her falling off this building. And she falls. But it looks like she's about to hit the ground and die. But she falls actually into some water. She's in the water. She's floating there. She's up, but she's watching herself in the bed. Now, this goes into denial. Now, this is the point where I'm feeling like, okay, she is really giving me cinematography and the poetry that she's using is really giving you a, a bigger visual than what the actual visual is giving you, if that makes any sense. Um, now, as she's talking about how she is abstaining from mirrors and sex and how she fasts for 60 days and didn't wear any white, uh, she's walking, looks like out of a church, and the water is coming out with her. And she, this is where we go into Miss Yellow Dress. Now, <clears throat> this is funny because she is walking around tearing everything up but she's smiling she laughing she's busting windows breaking cameras on the side of stores she's busting windows in the stores but she laughing and she's smiling the whole time with this nice pretty flowy dress and she's just skipping down the street just smiling you know kids playing outside without a care in the world and she's just tearing everything up while she's smiling now I like the song that she was singing um, while she was tearing everything up. <clears throat> and when she, when she went to that monster truck, though, <laughs> that was funny to me. I'm like, as if you could tear everything up enough. You said, well, let, wait a minute. This not good enough. Let me just get in the monster truck and just ride over everything and just tear everything up. Let's just do that. And she's smiling. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Now, clearly, this visual album is about something that she personally went through in her marriage with her husband. Um, you know, I'm not really shocked. Uh, Beyonce has been giving us clues that things has been going on in her marriage through her music um, leading up to this. So I really wasn't shocked when I saw this. Or when I was listening to this, I was shocked that she was so transparent with it. That's what shocked me because we know how private she can seem to be. So I'm really shocked that she really just gave us all of this in one album. You know what I'm saying? I thought maybe she would just keep giving us one song or two here and there on the album. But I guess she got tired of it. You know what I'm saying? I guess she was like, you know, I'm really bored with it. So let's just keep it real. And I, I'm not mad at this. Now, after denial, we go into anger. Now, she's in Louisiana. We go into this scene with this band. They marching down the street. And she got this dance line. And they doing their thing. And she's saying, you know, is this what you really want? Like, I can wear her skin. And her teeth as confetti. That was deep. I was like, oh, wow. Ooh. And she said, we can all take a picture. We can pose for a picture, all three of us. 
<laughs> that was crazy. I was like, oh my God, Beyonce, you was really angry. Okay. Now this takes us to the song with the fur and the braids with the tights on where she's really like talking cash money shit. And she's like in her full rock star B. I don't give a damn. I'm going to talk shit. I can't believe she said some of the things she said. Like, I'm going to bounce this fat ass to the next dick. I was like, whoa. Okay, this this is getting real. This is real. She's really like fit to tell us some stuff. Um, the um, who the who the fuck you think I is? That was cute. <laughs> that was cute when she did that in the cam uh, the camera. And when she said motivate your ass, call me the Mal call me Malcolm X. That was cute. Um, now when she got to the end of this song and she said, "This is your final warning. You know I give you life." If you try this shit again, you're going to lose your wife. That's what I really was like. Okay, yeah, she's going to give us like some stuff. For real, for real. Like, okay. And it gives you more insight in like the angry side of Beyonce. Which she rarely shows, kind of. We got a little bit of this side from her from Ring Me Alarm. But not really like this. Like She really was like full throttle, angry. Uh, Beyonce. Okay. Now we go into apathy now. They in the bus. You know with this tribal makeup. And we go to this house. And who come walking down the stairs. But Serena Williams. Honey child. When I tell you. I started hollering. I cannot believe. Serena Williams walked down those steps. With that leotard on. With those heels. And was dancing the way she was. And speaking of. We didn't get a lot of choreography from Beyonce. In this visual album. Which I don't mind. Because she always gives us choreography. So I was glad to see that she kept it more. On a cinematography scale. You know like she gave us a few little cute number dances. Like when she was on the bus. During this song. The um. I'm not, I ain't sorry song. Um, she gave us a little two step on the top of the bus. But really the key, the key point of this song was Serena. Like Serena was giving us the choreography. She was giving us the dancing. Um, and she said things in this song like stop interrupting my grinding. Um, me and my baby gonna be alright. We gonna live a good life. That was interesting. And when she said, you can call Becky with the good hair, she repeated it. Like, you can call Becky with the good hair. And that's how the song went off. And I was like, whoa, like, man, Beyonce, girl. Oh, my goodness. Her sitting in that chair, though, with Serena. <laughs> Back when Serena was, like, squatting down and was, like, twerking and uh, throwing that ass in a circle, I was getting my life. I was... Oh my, Serena with that hair, when she swung that hair and throw the deuces up when she was walking off and all it was just wagging. I ain't got time. Oh my God. That was just too much. But anyway, we go into emptiness after this. Now she in this red dress in this firebox. I'm living for her. Because I mean, she, she does give us great pose and great profile. That's Beyonce. She gives us that. Now we're going to this long red hall, this red light hallway. It's, and it's this door at the end of the hallway with this little bitty light box in there. And we we go all the way down this hallway and they start playing this song with her in the weekend. And I'm like, okay, that's different. But she talked about having on six inch heels. And I think this song is about like when she left, she really was working. He thought she was fooling with somebody else. But she really was just hustling, like, every day, all day. That's all she was doing, was just working, 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 working. And she was talking about how she don't have to give it up because she's a professional. Hmm. Interesting. Um, but that, that scene with her in that, that room swinging that light around her head with them women sitting, sitting around her, I live. I like that. But at the end of the song, she's saying, um, come back. I want you to come back. But she's standing outside this burning house. Oh, and can we just give it up for the fact that she was in that stretch linking Continental with that sick 
ass hat on her head. I ain't got time. Now, after emptiness, we go to accountability. 